This is Professor Pelton. This is part one of chapter three, section six. Now we're going to do absolute value functions in general. So we're going to look at uh, intercepts first. Uh, so in general, when you find intercepts, it doesn't matter what the function is. It's always generally the same thing. Whether it's x, y, or z intercepts, if you're doing three dimensions here, we're just doing two dimensions, so it's just x and y. So if you're if you're doing an intercept uh, of an axis, you must be on the axis, thus the other values must be zero. So if I'm an x-intercept, then my y value is zero because I'm on the x-axis. If I'm a y-intercept, then my x must be zero because by definition, I'm still on the y-axis. Okay, so you can just plug those values in. And if, if I was a z-intercept, because I was doing the third dimension, you would just plug in 0 for x and y. So, um, oops. Okay, so let's plug in uh, 0 for x first. So y equals negative 4, and then 0 over 2 plus 3 plus 8. Okay, so I have y equals negative 4 times the absolute value of 3 plus 8, the absolute value of... Um, 3 is 3, so we're good there. So that just gives me a negative 12. So I have negative 12 plus 8, so y is negative 4. So there is our y-intercept at negative 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Now we need to x-intercepts. So we have 0 equals negative 4, uh, x over 2, plus 3, <coughs> plus 8. So I'm going to solve with isolation. So adding and subtracting comes first in the isolation process. So negative 8 equals negative 4, absolute value of x over 2, plus 3. The multiplying and dividing comes second. So I'm going to divide by negative 4. So I get 2 equals the absolute value of x over 2, plus 3. Okay, so adding and subtracting, multiplying, dividing, exponents and radicals comes next, so I don't have any. So the last step is the grouping symbols, which is the absolute value. So you have x over 2 plus 3 equals 2, and I have x over 2 plus 3 equals negative 2, right? Because when you uh, solve for an absolute value, you get both answers, correct? Two lines, two answers. All right, so I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. So I'm going to get uh, x over 2 equals, if I minus 3, I want to have minus 1, and I'm going to get x over 2 equals uh, minus 5. Okay, so now I need to multiply by 2 on both sides. So multiply by 2, multiply by 2, multiply by 2, multiply by 2. So I'm going to get x equals and x equals. So on the left-hand side, one, I'm going to get negative 2, and the right-hand side, I'm going to get negative 10. So I actually have two answers thus two intercepts, which makes sense for an absolute value function. So I'm going to be at negative 2, and I'm going to be at negative 10. Okay, You can kind of see it's starting to make the V that I should expect. So I need the vertice now. So what I know is um, x over 2 plus 3 is equal to 0. So x over 2 equals negative 3, or x equals negative 6 when I solve. So that is my x value. My y value is the 8 right, which is the outside value. So negative 6, 8 is the vertex. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So negative 6, 8 is the vertex. So that gives me my absolute value graph. Okay. And our intercepts are 0, negative 4. Our x-intercepts are negative 2, 0. And 0, negative 4. Okay, pause the video. Try the student problem for yourself using the same processes. Okay, so first we're going to start off with the intercepts because we know if you're on the axes, the other one must be zero, right? So I want to do, it doesn't matter the order you do them really, but uh, I guess x intercept will come first. And I'll do y intercept second. So if I am a x intercept, that means my y value is zero, right? And if I'm a y, uh, that means my x is 0. And you can prove that to yourself by picking any coordinate on the y-axis. If I pick this coordinate right here, my x value is 0. If I pick this coordinate, my x value is 0. If I pick this coordinate, my x, y is zero. My x value is 0. Okay? So that's just a general concept. It's not something that's specific to the absolute value function. It's just graphs in general. 
Okay, so if I plug in a zero for the x, I get y equals three times the absolute value of two times zero minus five minus six. So y equals three times the absolute value of negative five minus six. So this is y equals 15 minus six because the absolute value of five, negative five is five times three is 15. So y equals um, so that'd be 9, so y is 0, 9 for the y-intercept. So we're going to put a point right up here, okay? So my x-intercepts are going to set y equal to 0, so 0 equals 3 times the 2x minus 5 minus 6. All right, solve with isolations. We're going to add 6 to both sides. Adding and subtracting comes first, so 6 equals 3, absolute value of 2x minus 5. Multiplying, dividing comes second, so 2 equals the absolute value of 2x minus 5. So we'll split it. So 2x minus 5 equals 2, or 2x minus 5 equals negative 2 when I split the absolute value. So if I add 5, 2x equals 7. And if I add 5, 2x equals 3. Okay. So if I divide by 2 on both of these, I get x equals 3.5, and I have x equals 1.5. That's good enough. So we get 3.5, and then we also have a 1.5 for our intercepts. Okay, so 3.5 and um, 1.5. Okay. All right, now we need our... Um, Vertex, so 2x minus 5 equals 0, 2x equals 5, so x equals um, 2.5, and our y value is negative 6. Okay, so we go over 2.5, so I go over 1, 2.5, and, and down 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so there is our... absolute value. Okay, kind of missed the point a little bit, but we got it. All right, that is the end of part one.